I, we just discussed mm. how the mm. Syrian society is hidden from mm. the mm. people here in, mm. in Australia. Mm. Also what's hidden is the fact that the Syrian society is, is majority Sunni society. Yes. So we know that Syrian, the secular mm. Syrian society, mm -hmm. the freedom of religion that mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. uh, enjoy, the, the freedom women have mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. it's all hidden mm -hmm. from our society because mm -hmm. uh, in my view, mm -hmm. having lived in Syria, mm -hmm. It corresponds to Australian society, perhaps mm -hmm. more than any other Middle Eastern country. Mm -hmm. So it has to be hidden, otherwise mm -hmm. we would be on that side, mm -hmm. the side of that mm -hmm. society. Mm -hmm. But another thing that's hidden mm -hmm. is that it's a majority Sunni society, mm -hmm. and that the Sunnis of Syria mm -hmm. do not welcome the extremism that's being mm -hmm. brought into their country. Mm -hmm. Could you comment on no, that? Of course, I mean, we know this, we know it. But once again, we go back to the media. I mean, what people know about Syria is what the media chooses to tell them and how it chooses to tell them. So there's a huge question here about media ethics and balancing reporting, objectivity, very, very big questions that relate to media ownership and the way the media operates generally. You know, And if we think about Australia, well, something close to 70% of the print media is operated by, owned by Rupert Murdoch. And we saw from what happened in England how corrupt the Murdoch organisation can be with the wiretapping the phone tapping and all the rest of it, and Murdoch himself was ultra, ultra conservative, very pro-Israeli, uh, he's anti all the things we're talking about, and Murdoch runs his newspapers in the same way, or the Australian, for example, newspaper is more or less like a free market Pravda. You know, it's tightly controlled, there are gatekeepers, in the same way that Pravda had them. All right? So all of this fits into the general context of the questions you're asking about why the media does what it does. You know, So the media will not say those things you're talking about, of course it won't, it, because it disrupts the narrative. It doesn't want people to know that women have freedom in, in, in Syria and that Syria is way ahead of most Middle Eastern countries in terms of individual freedoms. Of course, if you are involved in political activity against the government, you're in trouble. We know that. Well, there are good reasons for that, because Syria has been you know, under siege in many respects for a long, long period of time. Right? So the media is not going to bring out those positive aspects, but the interesting thing is why does the media pick up a government narrative and reproduce it? Mm. Why? This is the real mystery. Mm. Why? I mean, they did this over the Iraq war. It was seamless. You know, they, the 2003, let's not go back to the earlier ones, but just 2003. It was very obvious that what Bush was saying, that what Blair was saying, what Colin Powell was saying, was without any factual basis. Right? It was all propaganda. Blair's dodgy dossier, all the statements they're making about weapons of mass destruction had absolutely no evidentiary basis. Right? And if you're a journalist, you should have been able to see that. I mean, a child could have seen it. So where is the truth here? Mm. There's no truth. They couldn't prove it. And yet they went with this government narrative. Okay? But, and yeah. then we have a war which results in the destruction of the country mm. and the deaths of countless hundreds of thousands of people and the dispossession of many, many others. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, when they've hunted for their weapons of mass destruction and haven't found them, because they weren't there, all they, the two papers in, I know of, the New York Times and the Washington Post said, oh, we were wrong, we're sorry. But this was another lie, because they weren't wrong. That wasn't the explanation. The reason was they did not um, ask questions about the government narrative. And so after that, that kind of... Incredible propaganda operation. I thought, well, that that's got to be it. Then along comes Syria, and they do the same thing all over again. Why does the media do it? What is it? What, how does it interest the media to portray the Syrian war in such a fashion? The Guardian, for example, which is one of the worst culprits. Why was the Guardian's reporting of Syria up to this point so shocking, so one-sided? Like anything a rebel, so-called, or an activist said, the Guardian would snap up and publish. So why is the Guardian doing this? So does the Guardian have the same kind of antagonism towards Syria that the British government does for its own strategic reasons because in alliance with America and America wants to bring down the Syrian government partly because Israel wants to bring down the Syrian government I mean, all these reasons. But why does the media go along with this? What are they getting out of it? Are they getting money? Right? Why? 
What, how is it? In the, is it because it, it's a nine to five job? And no, no, it's not that. It's something to do with the culture. It's something, mm. it's very hard for me to put my finger on it, why mm. they, would, they would do this. But it's a pattern. That's the whole point is it's a pattern. It's not yeah. an incidental thing. It, it's not an aberration. It's not mm. that it's, it just happened once and we learn from our mistake. We're not going to do it again. We won't be sucked in again. Well, no, you weren't actually, no, what you're showing us is you, it's not a question of you being sucked in. You're going along with this. Mm. You weren't mm. questioning it. And you've done the same thing with Syria. You, and you'll do the same thing with Iran. It's like they've bought mm. the government line in America Right, and in England, on a whole range of Do issues. Do they also help determine the government line? Well, there's always interplay. Mm. Interplay, you know. But the media, I mean, then we have to ask the question about responsibility of the media. Mm. Right? Well, what is the responsibility of the media? Where does it lie? What is the media there for? Well, it's there to make money, make a profit. It doesn't make a profit, it's not going to survive. That's one thing, you know. But what else is the media supposed to be doing? Well, the old-fashioned idea was... The media is the watchdog of the public interest, right? And possibly that was more true up to about the 1970s, 1980s than it is now. And then the newspapers started to go downhill, right? Partly because of the internet, because people weren't reading it so much. They were watching television, they were doing social media, and all the rest of it. So the quality of newspapers declined. They started mm. to keep up sales. They were doing different things, you know, infotainment, mm -hmm. celebrity gossip, and all mm. the rest of it. The quality of analysis and reporting fell. Mm. But we're not really talking about that so much. We're talking about what should be reasonably good quality newspapers, like The Guardian, like The Washington Post. Why did they run this line on Syria? Why? Right? When obviously what they're saying is not true. And, and at the very least, it's not balanced. Why did The Washington Post or The Guardian never report what the Syrian government was saying? Goes back to money? I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I, I seriously don't know mm. why. You know, and with a paper like The Guardian, I have to ask questions, well, The Guardian can't make all that much money. Mm. Maybe it does, I don't think so. But the sponsors? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I really mm. can't mm. explain this, why the media does this all the time. Well, so when we talk about the media, what you're actually talking about is a media is business. Media is money. And, you know, the diverse, diversification of ownership of the media. Like in America, for example, a number of very large corporations have media ownership, like Westinghouse is one of them, only one of them. Um, Disney, I mean, uh, Murdoch, his interests go all across the print media into, um, into film, uh, into cable television, fibre optics, the whole thing, you know. And the media works, has always worked closely with government because there's give and take, right? The media wants things from the government, it wants licences. And the media will give things to a government, it will give them favourable publicity. Mm -hmm. And we know this uh, in Australia or in England, we know that politicians are very, very quick to try to curry favour with the media magnates, with Murdoch, for example. They might fall out, but they'll do their best to stay inside with him. So the media functions as part of right, the business sector, fundamentally. Right? And the business sector has close relationship with the government. So there are interlocking systems mm -hmm. of which the media is part. And I think this part explains the kind of narrative we see about Syria and what we saw about Iraq. You know, it's, it's pumping out a line. Yeah. You know? Also, um, I was an activist during the Vietnam War and I think we've got some other activists here. Mm. And one thing that we spoke about then was mm. the military-industrial complex mm -hmm. that's still alive and mm. active. Can mm. we also talk about the media-industrial um, complex you, and are there links? Are you talking about America or? Well, yeah. generally, mm -hmm. but America in particular, of course. But the media industrial complex, well, mm -hmm. can you just explain what you mean by that? It means that people don't really have a voice, mm -hmm. that, that you do have, as you're suggesting, mm -hmm. companies that have mm -hmm. this power that mm -hmm. can determine mm -hmm. what the narrative is, right. for example, on right. Syria. So you don't well, get that balance. You don't. Well, no, you don't. You don't. Oh, journalists look, don't have the freedom to present a balanced no, you, picture. No, they don't. You, if you're working for a big uh, news corporation, you can't write what you want. It might be just a, just coincidental that your views are the same as Rupert Murdoch's. Well, that's really nice. But if they're not the same as Rupert Murdoch's, you've got to make sure that pretty much they are. When you work there, otherwise you're not going to much of a future. You, you can't just wander off and write whatever you want. But the thing about the media is, you know, we a lot of people take these phrases for granted, like free press, right, and so forth and so on. Well, free for whom? Who has the right to speak? Who has the right to write in the media, right? It's very carefully controlled. I mean, it does vary a little bit from news organisation to news organisation, but basically it's controlled. Some people have access, 
some, a lot of people don't have access. I mean, a lot of people in Australia who don't have ac any access at all to the mainstream media. They're very well informed, they're very intelligent, they're articulate, they're, they're experienced, they know their area, but they're not going to be given any space in the mainstream media. So because they're going to say things mm -hmm. that the mainstream media, for whatever reason, doesn't want people to hear. If you worked in the mainstream media today, yeah. and you well, were a you're a person of courage, yeah. what would you do well, in I regards last. to Syria? I wouldn't last. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wouldn't last. I couldn't last. Mm -hmm. you You'd know? move into another area. You, you, well, you, you wouldn't be a, a no, ABC think, Middle East correspondent if you were a I person don't, no, of I because, integrity no, no, and courage. No, I wouldn't be because I would, I would go to Syria, and I'd want to go to the Syrian mm -hmm. government and get their take on what's going on. All the people. And I'd want to go to the West Bank. All the women. Go, don't forget right, the women. Okay. I'd talk to the women. Uh, if I were in, in the women Palestine. of Syria. If I'm in Palestine, I'd go to the West Bank and I'd talk to people there and I'd do it in a much more forceful way than the ABC would allow. And so therefore, someone like me, well, let's not talk about me, let's talk about someone like me, is not going to be given the freedom to speak. Right? You're sidelined. You know, I know lots of people here in this country who are very well informed about the Middle East, about Syria, about Iran. They have no place in the, in the media. You know, and they've tried. They've tried. But they're shut out. Mm -hmm. And so the space is given to um, Greg Sheridan, for example, in the Australian. And um, who was it who wrote this? Uh, Darren Hinch. <laughs> uh, in The Age wrote this silly piece. And comparing about, um, Assad yes. to Pol Pot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what is it, what, what is equality, so-called quality newspaper doing, running mm. Darren Hinch of the Middle East? Yeah. And the, the, when there are many, many people in this yeah. country well qualified to talk sensibly, and they use Darren Hinch. I think right? Darren Hinch probably was using his heart, and he was going to the shallow analysis but of why? the mainstream media. And he just thought, well, Assad's the criminal. He's a brutal criminal. He's killing his own people. He must be like Pol Pot. But, no, but why, I believe why, but why use like Darren Hinch for this anyway? Yeah. He can write a letter to the editor. Yeah. You know, Darren Hinch from Armadale, yeah. you know, worried reader, whatever yeah. he wants to, yeah. uh, just how he wants to why describe himself. Why don't they himself. ask you and me to write yeah. an article? Well, not me. No, no, forget me. <laughs> Leave me out don't. of it. Leave me out of it. But there are a lot of other people mm. who can write intelligently. That's why do they go to Darren yeah. Hinch? Yeah. You know? Mm. I, you know, and but the, going whole, back to and the whole thing about the media is. That news is an artifact. We'll have a fight soon. No, 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 we're not going to have a fight. No, <laughs> news is an artifact. That's something that people who yeah. read a newspaper yeah. might not necessarily be fully aware of. Yeah. And they do, generally, you'll know it. But you don't know that, that, that like, the newspaper is one dimensional. There mm -hmm. it is. But there's a whole kind of, like, hive of activity before that. So the raw mm -hmm. news is shaped by the reporter, by the editors. It's shaped mm -hmm. according to where it's placed in the paper. It's shaped yeah. according to the headline that's put over it. It's honed mm -hmm. and whittled and refined mm -hmm. until it gets to you. And you've got to think mm -hmm. of the massive information that comes into the media every single day, whether you're talking about newspapers or television. Immense mass. And what you're seeing is a tiny fraction. Right? So news should be put in quotes. News is something that the newspaper or the television station wants you to know, chooses for you is not unmediated. Yeah. And then the other part of that, of course, is mm. the politics of it, right? And the way that uh, the way that things are reported, right? And for example, in the case of Syria, why Syria is reported in such a negative fashion, in such an unbalanced fashion? Why, why have none of these news organisations seen right. as their business to try to be fair? Right? This is what the so-called rebels are saying. Let's hear what the Syrian government and people who support the government have to say and what the families of the soldiers have to say. No, we've seen nothing of that, nothing whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So it's completely lopsided. And we get back to that basic question, why do they do it? Mm -hmm. What's in it for them? What's in it for them? You know? And there's something grey here that I can't really mm -hmm. put my hands on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at the moment, and the people in this room know, know yeah. this, because I'm asking yeah. them to help me, I'm working on a complaint letter to the ABC, because mm -hmm. they had a program mm -hmm. on in December on Radio National, mm -hmm. Earshot Program, mm -hmm. The Draws of Memory, Ahmad's Story. Mm -hmm. And the protagonist in this program mm -hmm. was a freedom fighter in Syria, okay. someone who was a money runner for Describes the Describes freedom fighter? Well, he says he supports freedom and he's, he's friends, oh. the insurgents in eastern Damascus, okay. who support freedom. He reckons yeah. they will win in the end. Right. And maybe they will. They've got so much support right. from right. Saudi Arabia, from right. Qatar. Apparently he was a money runner mm -hmm. uh -huh. with Saudi Arabia right. and right. Qatar's money. But he's presented on the ABC as someone 
that's credible. Mm -hmm. And the victims of these insurgents, ordinary mm -hmm. people like mm -hmm. us that live mm -hmm. in the suburbs of Damascus, mm -hmm. uh, are just ignored. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I discovered when I did a little bit of research on this story mm -hmm. is that this is basically an unofficial ABC policy to present this side of things, mm -hmm. as, as we've been discussing, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. And so you get Media Watch saying Assad is a brutal dictator, Assad mm -hmm. is a war mm -hmm. criminal, Assad mm -hmm. um, has used chemicals against his right. people, da da right. da da right. da da. So mm -hmm. if Media Watch says this, mm -hmm. what mainstream de journalist dares mm -hmm. present another narrative, dares present the but side what, of the when, Syrian why, why should we use the word dare? What is the problem in reporting Syria in a more balanced way? I mean, Australians would like to know, I'm sure. They'd like to have a different picture. Why does the media pump up this completely lopsided view? Why? Why are they doing it? What are they, what are they, now, what are they frightened of? Why are they buying this narrative in this fashion? This is what I really can't understand. You know, they're not being told to do it by the government. The government's not issuing an edict. Please report this situation like this. No one's doing that. So exactly how does it work out like that? That they will just report a situation in, in this kind of grossly unbalanced fashion? People get intimidated. No, they don't realise their right. power. I don't know. Do um, Individuals I, don't realise the power and influence they have. If you were, I, I imagine if you're if you're an editor of a mainstream newspaper and you suddenly had a rush of blood to the head, and decided to report Syria what you or I would call fairly and objectively, you probably wouldn't last. But why? Mm. Why would they not allow you to report Syria in a more balanced fashion? This is the mystery mm. we keep, keep mm. coming back to. Mm. Why does the media do this? Mm. I mean, no one's going to punish them if they report Syria in a more I would think, in a more balanced fashion. Why do they do it? And this, this is happening all the time, this freedom fight, I'm a freedom fight, I love freedom. Oh, great, okay. Well, so do I, you know. <laughs> so do the Syrian people. We all, we all love freedom. Freedom's a really nice thing. You know? But what is freedom? What well, is freedom? Yeah, but it's just, it's a word. That's what it is. It's a word. <laughs> I love freedom. Freedom you know? to live yeah, in peace. You know? I'm going to kill people, but I love freedom. You know? <laughs> and I'm going to you kill know? them for and Saudi we have this, Arabia, we have this, for America. This has just gone on and on for the last five years, and it doesn't stop. Thank you.